Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know when visiting Peru. First up, let's talk about the arrival process into Peru. So when you arrive, you get processed digitally. They don't give you a passport stamp. You get about 90 days. Some people get 183 days, uh, but they don't issue any visa extensions, which is kind of unique. So you would have to leave the country for a short amount of time and then come back if you really loved it. But typically 90 days is average. Now, if you wanted to stay longer, there are different types of visas that you can apply for, but that's just the average. All right, now let's talk about places to go when here in Peru. So as you can see right now, I'm in the salt mines nearby Cusco. Uh, it's about a two hour drive from Cusco. Around Cusco, you're gonna have Rainbow Mountain, Machu Picchu, and several other Incan sites that are very amazing. About three hours from here, you'll go into the Salvo, which is the jungles where the Amazon is. The headwaters for the Amazon River are said to begin here in the Andes along the Peruvian mountains. There's three different areas that are supposedly the headwaters. Now, if you go towards the coast, you have places like uh, Arequipa, a beautiful town. You also have Ica, a lake. Then you have Lima, which is the capital. Probably spend one or two days there. I'd recommend two days. Uh, also, if you go towards the southern point by Bolivia, you have Lake Titicaca. And then you have beautiful beaches in the north of Peru and then in the south. So. Lots to do here when you visit Peru. Now let's talk about weather. So they have two seasons here. They have the dry season and the wet season. The dry season is from May until October. The wet season is from December until about March. So if you're coming up to the Andes or going to Machu Picchu, it's gonna be a bit uh, rainy here in Cusco. Every day in February, it's rained uh, in the evening times. Now if you come during the dry season, the mountains aren't gonna be green, they're gonna be uh, brown. So depends on what kind of scenery you wanna take in. But uh, yeah, once you go up above 13,000 feet, you can expect possible snow. Uh, right now here at Cusco, I believe we're at about 11,000, 12,000 feet. That's pretty high up. And you feel it when you're walking around. Uh, Machu Picchu, for example, is 8,000 feet. So uh, depending on the weather, what you want, pick and choose. But those are the seasons right there. They have three different climate zones here. They have the coast, the Sierras, and then the jungle. When you go over the other side of the Andes towards the Amazon, that's the jungle. It's going to be hot and humid over there pretty much year round. Now let's talk about transportation and getting around. So if you wanted to go from, say, Lima to Cusco and you wanted to take a bus, that would take about 24 hours. So the best way to get there is by airplane, and that takes an hour. Now getting around when you're here in places in Cusco, I highly recommend a taxi or getting with one of the tours, although they do buses. Going from Cusco to Machu Picchu, where I'm at now here in uh, Machu Picchu to Pueblo, also known as Aguas Calientes, you actually take a train from Oleantambo. To get from Cusco to Oleantambo takes about an hour and a half to two hours by bus or taxi. Uh, but it is quite an effort to get here around five hours away from Cusco. So I recommend doing a split trip. I would say try and stay in Aguas Calientes because waking up at four in the morning to get here by 10 or 11 for the tour, it's kind of difficult. And then going back in the same day. Also with the transportation, I wanted to say that you can also do train only really from uh, Oleantambo to Machu Picchu. So riding the train, <laughs> it's about $65 each way. It's a little bit cheaper if you buy the round trip ticket. Also, if you're bringing luggage, it's half the price you pay for the ticket. So if you paid $60 for your ticket and you have a luggage, it's $30 per luggage. All right, now let's talk about the currency and the cost and affordability of traveling around Peru. So the currency here is the SOL, S-O-L. About 3.50 SOL equals one US dollar at the time I'm making this video. I usually just say, if it's gonna be 10 SOL or 10 SOLES, think of it like three US dollars, okay? Um, and then you can just bump up from there. But currency conversions change over time. Now, when you're in tourist areas, like Machu Picchu, for example, very expensive. I mean, you're paying uh, first world pricing. Reason for that, supply and demand. Lima, you can get very affordable hotels. Cusco, very affordable hotels. I stayed at the Hilton Garden Inn for about $100 a night. 
And the Hilton Garden Inn, in my opinion, could easily be a regular Hilton. <laughs> it's a really nice hotel. The Hilton Motto is a brand new hotel in the city center. That was like $85 a night. But then they have hostels for $20 a night, $30 a night here in Aguas Calientes even. The hotel I'm staying at here in Aguas Calientes, $120 a night. And it's a boutique hotel, they call it a four star. Um, getting around transportation, like I said, it, it's around a $100 a day for a taxi. Can be a little bit more depending on where you're going. This train right here, very expensive. Very expensive. Look at that, that's the Peru Rail right there. But anyway, that's another great way to get around with transportation. Um, overall, food cost, depending on where you are, if you're in the tourist areas, it's going to be expensive. If you're outside the tourist areas, it's going to be local pricing, very affordable. So it just depends on whether or not you're in the tourist areas or outside the tourist areas. And when it comes to using ATMs like this one, this one's not working right now. So ATMs are hit or miss. Uh, cash is king around here. Sometimes they'll have currency conversion places, but still, they've got a lot of problems and they got a long ways to go with getting the ATM situation uh, situated. Although uh, most places do take card if you're in a tourist area. But again, when you're not in a tourist area, you need cash and it's hard to get cash. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about safety here in Peru. I think it's a good time as we have the siren blaring in the background. People think uh, Peru might be dangerous so they don't come here, especially Lima, they think. Uh, and in some areas of Lima, it is dangerous. But uh, I walk around San Isidro, Miraflores, Central Historico without any issues. Let's see what this siren's all about. As I'm walking around here, I see uh, people walking around at night, in the daytime. This here is Miraflores. I think most of Miraflores, you can come here without even having to blink an eye or bat an eye. Obviously, you follow general rules as you would in any city, stay away from dark areas, but really safe. Um, one thing I will say, I did have an earthquake happen here in Lima. When I went up to Cusco in the Andes, I would say driving is a bit crazy because they have some landslides. Uh, so you could be on a road where there might be a landslide. But over, other than that, I would say um, Miraflores, San Isidro, for the most part, Cusco safe, Machu Picchu, Aguas Calientes, safe places. Just follow general uh, rule of thumb, guidance. Uh, Arequipa, same thing, Lake Titicaca. I have found that the areas where there's the most indigenous people seem to be the most safe. Um, but in the big cities, there are some sketchy areas in Lima. so. Please, please don't just uh, think that I mean all of Lima safe when I say this. Now, with that being said, there is Uber, there is taxis. When you get into a taxi, make sure that it's one of the safe registered taxis. Don't just get into any old taxi uh, because that could cause a problem possibly for you. So that's something I would say, but Uber is probably your best option because it's registered. They know who the driver is, all that stuff. Yeah, so when you do come to Peru, don't be scared to try guinea pig. It actually tastes better than I thought. You can see that's what the meat looks like, but I'll just take a big bite just like this. Very crispy. Full of flavor. Very flavorful. And other types of popular food here. There's going to be lots of seafood. You've got octopus, as you can see here, and then ceviche. This here is a tuna ceviche. I also ate a lot of soups. This one here is with potatoes, noodles, and chicken. Also, plenty of breads that they serve before every meal. No chips. Don't expect Mexican-style food here. I also ate my fair share of steak. They have this fried steak, they have chimichurri, and then they also have chicharron, which is a pork. So this is a very good chicharron here with the tamale. Then you have pisco, pisco sour, which is a very famous drink here. Plenty of beers, I always went with the golden lager. And then this famous red drink is called corn juice, also known as chincha morada. Next up, let's talk about hotels. I'll give you all the information you need to know about Lima and other places around Peru. Now this hotel that I'm at right now is the Aloft Hotel. It's around $140 a night. I used my Marriott Bonvoy points and I got a suite. This is a, a living room with a bedroom over here. So you can see here's the bedroom, very modern hotel. Got good views looking out towards Lima here, Miraflores area. 
The hotels that I stayed at in Aguas Caliente or in Cusco, those were some of them a chain hotel, like there was a Hilton, there was also Marriott's, but I also stayed at some non-chain hotels like in Aguas Calientes. Uh, you can find hostels in that area for around $37, $35 it seemed like. Uh, but depending on where you're at in Peru, you can get them even lower than that for uh, hostel or even small hotel rooms. Uh, you don't really pay a tax here. Uh, they ask you a question when you check in how many days you've been in Peru, and then based on your answer is how much tax you will pay or how much of a tax benefit you get. So that's very interesting. All right, now let's talk about some interesting facts about Peru. So it is considered that where the headwaters for the Amazon is. There's about three main rivers that uh, pour into the Amazon. Obviously, there's some tributaries that connect to those three main rivers, Urubamba being one of them, which is by Machu Picchu. Now, there's also some other interesting things. Uh, Lima is home to the only capital in South America that faces the Pacific Ocean, the world's tallest sand dunes here. You also have Machu Picchu, which is considered one of the seven new wonders of the world. Peru is also home to 70% of the world's alpacas. You'll notice a lot of things start with puma. There used to be a lot of pumas, which are mountain lions living here in Peru, in particular in the Andes. As I just showed you, the Peruvian food. Peruvian food is actually one of the best cuisines in the world, rated by many different uh, people who rate food. So Peruvian food is considered really delicious. Peru is also the source of where many different foods that you eat today come from, such as tomatoes, potatoes, coca, which is also chocolate. And just some quick facts about Machu Picchu. It's actually 1,300 feet above Aguas Calientes, which is uh, around 6,500 feet. This one here is about 8,000 feet. So it's quite high up here, but look at this view. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV. Best things to know when visiting Peru. If you guys enjoyed this one, consider watching our other videos across Peru, such as Lima and Cusco. See you on the next one.